This podcast, this podcast, this podcast is Intel enhanced. So, in these quite strange and wild times that we're having at the moment in the world, uh, we at She's a Wreck HQ have decided to launch the podcast early. So we've been working really hard to get it going and to finalise as much as we can with what we've got so far so we can get it out to you and give you some love in your ears. Hopefully we can get to the end of the season and guests will be able to record and we can get the final episodes. So in the meantime, enjoy. All right, here we go. Hello, I'm Lauren Lyle and this is She's a Wreck your new favourite podcast where I sit down and chat to some of the coolest women of our time on their biggest recommendations of albums, films, books and their female heroes. I wanted to launch this podcast as I realised a lot of my artistic taste generally came from men. I could list you my favourite bands and they'd be men or my favourite films and they'd be directed by men which is amazing but I decided it would also be cool to have some brilliant women review and highlight some more brilliant women that have most influenced their life. Each week, I'm going to be joined by a woman that I've asked to come in and prepare the album, the film and the book by a woman that has most influenced their life. We'll have a chat and get to know who they are and why they're so cool. And then we'll get into why these pieces of culture and arts have really influenced their life and made them who they are. A great way to experience this podcast is through the interactive Entail app, where you can see photos of the podcast recording. You can find links to the books and films that we're talking about, and you can also download the albums and the She's a Wreck playlists. For this first episode, it felt only right to start with none other than the magnificent goddess of a woman, Katrina Balfe. Once a Chanel model and now a Golden Globe nominated actress and recently a producer, and for a while now a close friend of mine through working on our show Outlander, she's had a wild ride in life and is one of the smartest, classiest and most badass women I know. We sat down in her gorgeous home with our cat Eddie and I couldn't think of a better place to start. Welcome to the first ever episode of She's a Wreck. My new podcast. Um, I'm Lauren Lyle and I'm really excited. This is something I've wanted to do for a really long time and I'm very honoured to be joined on my first one. Couldn't think of anyone better <laughs> to be on the first Couldn't one. Couldn't think of anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't think of anyone. So instead I've got <laughs> Katrina Valve. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> um, you to, um, to let people know that maybe don't know who you are. I mean, you're just like a casually four times Golden Globe nominated actress. Um, four, four time loser. <laughs> just four times. <laughs> More losses than I've ever come near to, <laughs> so that's fine. Um, and you have had a very colourful creative life. I know you as my stepmother in Outlander hit international television series <laughs> Outlander, filmed all over the world, on location in Scotland and apparently elsewhere. And um, good friend, and all round, I just think you're a very cool girl. Oh my God, thank you. Jeez. No, you are. I did. I think because for this, it's weird that I'm your stepmom. I know, I know, because it's really you're far too young. I mean, yeah. you are. I could. I mean, I could be your mother, probably. True. Maybe I shouldn't offend people by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have like heard a story. Oh God, that is. I mean, you mean you might have told me it. I don't know, because I don't feel like I've Googled you. I mean, maybe even like when I just started the show, I Googled you and like intimidation. I'm very, very scared about what this is going to be, because I know the few times we've had late night conversations, <laughs> I, this could be anything. So what? Well, yeah. Okay. So no, it's, I don't think it's embarrassing. Well, you tell me. I know that you started in theatre when you were quite young in Ireland, mm -hmm. and then you went on to be... A model, mm -hmm. like a proper, like a proper model, <laughs> as opposed to those, you know, you know, those ones that I, I wasn't quite doing the marigold dishcloth hands. You, know? <laughs> you wouldn't be wonderful which, though, which you know, is, somebody does do that. Um, the re amazing. We we need those people. We need, everyone needs marigolds. <laughs> um, but you then, like you were, you were in Victoria's Secret. Like that. Oh God. So this is what I mean. Like you were a Victoria's Secret model, and Carl Lagerfeld like loved you. You did things all over the joint, and. And all of a sudden, Outlander turned up, but you weren't initially 
they didn't initially know that you were someone and like wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> no I was acting I was yeah, acting yeah. when I came along I definitely wasn't on anyone's lists for uh leading a tv show for sure okay so is it true that you had sent tapes they'd been seen and then they maybe like had got everyone had been pushed to the side and they hadn't found someone and then they revisited like what was it like yeah, I'm not so there's a couple of different versions of what went down and I think two different people sort of have their own origin stories of how I was cast okay. um, my version or the one that I know like I, I don't know Karen Bailey from Stars has one mm-hmm. and Tony Graffia has one mm-hmm. I was living in LA and I was a desperate actor who was not working very much, but, you know, occasional jobs. Yeah. Um, and I had sent in a tape from L.A. and it went nowhere. I didn't hear anything back. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, I was actually doing a couple of days on this indie film in Belgium. And on my way back, I stopped off in London and I met with some agents and I met with my agent that I'm still with now. And he was like, you know, there's this project and I think you'd be really good for it. And I was like, oh, I've taped for that. You know, I haven't heard anything. And he was like, oh, well, send me the tape. Let me look at it. And so you had done this to a different agent? Yeah, well, so it was my manager in LA. I didn't uh, even have an agent at the time. Ah, yeah, inspiring. I was, I was being hip pocketed. You know that term when like no. somebody in it. Yeah, they do this thing in LA where somebody hip pockets you. Okay. So it's usually either a very junior agent or an agent's assistant who wants to be an agent. And they kind of like, they half have you as a client. So they'll send you out on things just in case. And if you get a job, then they might. So they'll take your money. You. Yeah, or they, they'll, if they think you might have potential. So it was one of those okay, situations. Okay, okay, cool, cool, yeah. Um, at least that's how I'm looking at it. Yeah, love, you must, <laughs> you must, yeah. But anyway, so I, I met with Michael and he was like, saw the, the audition that I'd done and he was like, well, yeah, that's not really the right tone or whatever. Because no I, I, you know, when my manager had sent me it, I was given two lines or whatever. So I retaped and that's the tape that went in that eventually somebody saw and... Then and I then, got the job. So they, and then the I tur- kept that agent because I was like, you're a bloody good agent. <laughs> <laughs> but the turnaround was mad. Was it not? Did you not get notice? And then they were like, can you get to Scotland for six years now? Well, yeah, I didn't know it was going to be six years then. I think I turned that tape in. I didn't hear anything for about three or four weeks. Then I auditioned like on a Monday or Tuesday. I didn't hear anything until the next Tuesday. And then I was in Glasgow on the Friday. Whoa. And you just moved? For a year. Did you know? Did you I did know? not know. No. Did you? I didn't I, even know it was going to be a year. I think I remember because everything started happening so quickly, and and all the guys had been cast. Everyone oh. was already in Scotland in boot camp. Sam had been cast, I think, in like June. Uh huh. Um, everyone was here. Everyone had apartments. Everyone had, you know, they knew each other. They were already doing all of their like acting, yeah. coaching, horse riding, everything. And then I show up and we were supposed to start filming the next week, but I had no costumes because... Oh my God, you hadn't fit for anything. Well, because so. I hadn't fit for anything. And then I arrived and like, there was no apartment. And I remember the first few weeks being so beautiful and autumn and I, you know, coming from LA where yeah. there is no seasons. I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> so romantic. It is so romantic. <laughs> And uh, a mate of mine was here from New York and he's originally from Glasgow and he walked me up all around Kelvin Grove Uh and like Park Circus and, you know, was showing me all the best parts of Glasgow. And I was like, oh, this is going to be so great. And then it rained (laughs) for about six months. But I love, I love that it was, didn't they think that they would cast, it would take ages to cast Sam or it takes ages to cast a guy because it was meant to be the king of men. And it would, they'd find the girl really easily and actually, like, they couldn't find someone to, like, Well, yeah, I mean, that's the what they say. Or... That's, that's what, um, you know, what Meryl and Ron have always said about it. I mean, I don't know. It's... Uh, but that's kind of that amazing hard. to have been, like... like, <laughs> but, like you could, they couldn't find someone that was good enough to do it. Like, yeah. they must have looked at, like, hundreds of people and they couldn't find someone. I mean, I was in L.A. I was and, doing nothing. <laughs> All they had to do was available. just, you know, call me. <laughs> <laughs> Which they did. Eventually. Um, so it's worked out quite well then. Um, it's so, been amazing. I mean, yeah. it has. It's, it's been an absolute job of a lifetime. I mean, yeah. these things do not come around very often. 